Hey guys, what's up? It's Rahul from the Chaos Gym again. Um, I'm going to do a back-to-back -back video tonight just so I can, you know, get some content back up and running. Um, I did the whole Rahul Road to Worlds last year for 2017. It was a long journey. You guys watched me rise up to the occasion to get my invite, but you guys saw me fall just short of top 16. And I made a video to start the season off with my uh, Fort Wayne journey where I earned points. So I thought it'd be fitting now that we're towards the end of the season and I haven't done anything the entire 2018 season, 2017-2018 season, that I would do a recap on the points that I've earned and with what decks I use to earn these points throughout the year and kind of just talk about it a little bit briefly. Um, I thought that'd be kind of cool to talk about and give you guys a glimpse into how I, how I choose decks and stuff. So as you guys can see, the season started off. I'm going to do cups first and then I'm going to move to regionals. And I'm going to talk about, like, links from Cups 2 regionals and how they, you know, certain decisions I did affected from one end to the other. So, um, timeline-wise, we started off with the Auburndale Elite Cup. Uh, first quarter, I played a ton of Cups because I played a ton of decks for fun. I had a lot of friends who were motivated to go to tournaments and, like, ready and raring to go to get their invites. Um, that kind of died as we moved along through the season. But we had a lot of people going, so it was a lot more fun to go and hang out with everybody. The plans after would be like get dinner, chill. And I love playing Pokemon, so I don't mind going to Cups as much. I actually enjoy it a little bit, unless it's eating up all my time like it has been. I wrote a big blog post, the race to top 16, the rat race. So you guys can check that out. The first League Cup was the weekend following Worlds, where I had a you know upsetting finish over there. Um, didn't really live up to you guys' expectations, didn't live up to my expectations. And I piloted ho Salazzle, the 9th place and 17th place by Takeshi Tosa. And Yoneda, their lists. It looked very fun. I piled it to a top eight finish, and then I got. I think I lost to. Um, I lost to Franco in top eight, but I forgot what he was playing. I think it was. I don't remember. It's been a long time, but I lost in top eight. Uh, the following day, the same weekend, I played Greninja because I thought it was busted based on the metagame from the day before. And in top eight, I remember losing to Gardevoir because I had a really bad start game three, and it just didn't look great for me. And then, let's fast forward two weeks, I believe. Um, nothing really happened. Uh, there were some tournaments in between, regionals, etc., etc. Three weeks, actually. And I found myself at the Plantation League Cup playing a standard version of Volcanion, in a deck I thought that I wouldn't be playing. Um, that was testing for Hartford, realistically speaking. And I managed to rattle off a first place win. And I told John Eng the next day that if I um, played Volcanion and won, I would play his Xerneas Break Sylveon deck. And I did, and I played that at the Waterford Cup, which is one of my favorite cups of all time to go to. Um, it's close to home, close to school, and I love everyone who runs it. Uh, and I got a top four with the deck, losing to Jimmy Pinarvis playing Metagross, uh, who made finals. Um, and then I had a little bit of a break, and I had, I had my two finishes. So there really wasn't much reason for me to keep going, but I enjoyed playing, so I did. And then I went to Palm Bay, where I piloted Volcanion again, and um, there I had a very upsetting 1-2 finish. Um, losing games I thought I should have won, and it just wasn't great for me. And the following day, I picked up Metagross, went back into a cup, and finished in the finals. Actually, I remember losing to Metagross Mirror because he played a Solgaleo line, 2-1-2, I believe, and I did not. Um, so he had the edge. And then immediately following, uh, was this after London, I want to say? Um, Glossopod Zork was getting a little bit of hype, so I picked it up, I went in there, I want to say this was after London. I think the tem timeline might be wrong for London. Let's see. Um, okay, I don't have a date on European IC. The timeline just might be wrong. Oh, no, it was expanded. Never mind. So I actually picked up Aaron Tarbell's deck um, that he posted from Daytona. And I piloted to a top four finish losing to Gardevoir. Expanded again. Kind of sucked. Um, getting so close so many times. And then the following weekend, that was the last weekend of Cups for quarter one. I picked up Greninja once more. Uh, old Reliable. And I managed to pilot it through a field of favorable matchups like Zoroark, um, Ninetales, etc. That was the first weekend Zoroark GX was legal, and I was just like, I'll just body everybody. And I was beating people who were playing Volcanion. And I managed to pick up two cup wins in the first quarter for points. Um, the second quarter, I played Glisspot Zoroark. Uh, this is right after London, so I was actually just testing out the list. I got top eight, and I lost to Buzzrock. And I that was the first time I realized how strong Buzzrock was. And then Zorak Lycanroc was the deck I began testing past that, and I took it to a finals finish, losing to um, Greninja in the finals, actually, because I didn't have an answer, and I drew pretty bad. 
And then I took uh, the same deck after the week after Memphis, after I got top eight with it, um, to another cup, and I got top eight, where I lost to a Bulu deck, which uh, isn't a favorable matchup, so that was unfortunate. And then I played Glissapod Garbodor um, and another cup to a finals finish, losing to a Bulu again. So I had two seconds in the second quarter to round me out. The third quarter is where I had uh, a majority of my struggles this season. Um, I couldn't find my groove, and I just refused to play Buzzrock, which was clearly one of the best decks at the time. Um, so I started out the season playing Zorok Doug Trio. Uh, I list my friend Peter Kika concocted. I was convinced it looked very fun. It looked very cool. I went in there very confident, and um, I just didn't win games. And then the next day, I played Gar- uh, Sylveon, which is a mill deck, because I thought the meta would be perfect for it, and it was. I managed to hit two of the players playing um, Magnezone in the room, actually, and I still almost made top 8. I think I got 10th, I want to say, with 4-2. I think two four twos bubbled in, uh, and the rest did not. Because we had a couple of juniors and seniors that just dominated the event. And then I played a couple later on in the season. And I played Gardevoir Max Potions, kind of like the old school London build with a Broken Vore type of deal. And I managed to win the cup because a lot of the metagame was Bulu at the time being an Espeon Garb. And it just, it was kind of a breeze, honestly. Um, and then I played Greninja again to see how my old friend would do, and I was met with a flurry of Tina promos and um, unfortunate draws, like ending them to one or two, and shadow stitching and them getting exactly what they needed, uh, with a turn left for me to win. So that forced me to go to a league challenge on the last possible weekend of the quarter, um, and I piloted Zorak Lycanroc, good old hand, uh, the trustworthy deck that I was testing for Brazil at the time, with the counter energies and the Sudowoodo and the, that variation, and I managed to go 3-0, um, winning the league challenge, which kind of felt a little bad because I was so in the thick of the top 16 race, but I managed to get two finishes, which was a win and a top uh, a league challenge win, which you know isn't even good enough as a top eight, but uh, I'll take whatever points I can get at that time being. Um, and then this, this quarter, I don't nearly need the points for cups because I'm pretty locked into top 16, um, but I went to the Modesty League Cup in New York, uh, with my friends uh, to hang out and scoop to some friends. And I played a Tapococo Naganadel spread deck, and I made the finals with it where I scooped to Jeff Hang, uh, playing Buzzguard, which I think is a bad matchup anyway. Uh, I probably would have lost that because I didn't play Blower. So I probably, I really would have lost that because I can't use my Muse. I have four Cocos at most. Um, yeah, it just kind of sucks, and he just eventually start one-shotting everything. Uh, one strong at a Fury Belt, then his Fury Belts too. Like, how am I supposed to win that? Um so I got 40, co- 40 points so far with the only cup I played this quarter, and that's second place finish. I probably will attend one more cup this quarter at the very least, just to say hi to some friends, and I want to play Lapras at that, so I'm giving you guys a heads up. So let's go over to my regionals and what decks I played. Um, okay, let's do this. Okay, there we go, that should show up now. So the first regionals I technically played in was the Anaheim Open. It's not really a regionals, but it's um it was a regional level event. And I played Decidueye Zorak, or not Decidueye, Decidueye Galissapod because of how I had performed previously at the um, World Championships, and I wanted to play a deck that was fun, so I talked to some of my friends who were, uh, the Brazilian players were very cool, and I, I picked up their deck and I piloted it to a 5-3 finish, losing to Simon Road, who was playing Espeon Garb. Um, my, my troubles came from Garb decks throughout the, the day and a Volcanian deck, um, but I managed to pick up 40 points. Um... The next, the next um, thing that I played was uh, Turbo Turtles at Fort Wayne, Indiana, which is an expanded deck. Uh, as many of you know, Sam Chang got the finals with the deck. Uh, it was a deck that I had worked on very hard for a while between Worlds and that uh, that Regionals because I was frustrated and I wanted to uh, just put something work into it. I, I lost to Christopher Shemansky, Israel Sosa, and Swiss, and then I managed to uh, lose my winning in to Brian Hunter, who was playing a speed version of Volcanian. Um, on the backs of game two and three off of like um, me needing one more turn uh, and him not hitting exactly what I needed type of deal. Um, game two, I should have won, but my Lysander was my last prize, uh, which was heartbreaking, honestly. Um, but yeah, the Volcanian list I played at the Cup and we had tested and perfected um, with Azul Garcia Griego, who was the mastermind behind that deck. We piloted Hartford the week after and I went 6-3, losing to a Greninja, I believe a Gardevoir and a Drample Garbodor, um, all matchups that don't seem favorable because of Parallel City, and the weekend, uh, and then the next regional I played in was Daytona, which was expanded, uh, where I played uh, Azul and Brad, 
uh, Necrozma Garbodor. The deck seemed incredibly busted at the time. It seemed like the best deck by far. Uh, it was the best deck by far because we had Ryan Sablehus winning the event with the deck, same 60 I played, and a bunch of other players performing well, including Azul getting top four. I made day two of the event, but day two the cards didn't go my way. And I just kind of bricked a bunch of times. There was a, game, a stream game versus me and Danny Altavilla where I literally um, got benched both games in like five minutes and the stream game was over, which is really upsetting. Um, and then we went to San Jose where it was expanded. I picked up Peter Kika's Night March uh, Zorak deck, which was the first iteration of that variant. And I took me to a top four finish, uh, earning me 130 points. And then we went to Memphis where I played Zorak Lycanroc with a bunch of tech cards, Max Potion, Buzzwole, multi switch, all this mumbo jumbo fun stuff, and that took me uh, to a top eight finish, um, losing to Michael Pramalant in top eight. In Mirror, but his Mirror was more centralized and built to beat Mirror, I think. Um, but that that put me, um, yeah. And then the next weekend I played, oh not next weekend, sorry. The next few regionals was Dallas for me, uh, which expanded again, and I played that much to work once more. Uh, this time I was uh, not fortunate; I dropped at four four. Unbeknownst to me, had I won my fifth round and went to 5-4, there was a pretty high chance I would have earned pity points at 30. But I was just done with the deck, and I'm not the kind of guy who will stick around for something like that. If I don't believe in the deck, I don't believe in myself. So it um, was a little upsetting for me. And then the next regionals was Collinsville, which was standard. That played Zorak Weavile, um, a deck that we had gotten from the Europeans toward Nico Alabas, Robin, those guys. A huge shout-out to them for that back then. And I played it. It was really fun, but uh, I lost a bu- I started 1-2, losing to some like weird decks like Glaceon. And then I managed to rattle it back and put myself in a position to make day two on the last round. And um, game two, I was set up perfectly against a Buzzrock, and I was drawing perfectly. And I couldn't find DCEs to close out the game. In game three, he just didn't give me a chance to breathe, and I lost. Um, and then in Costa Mesa, California, it was an expanded event. I piloted a Buzzrock variant very similar to Andrew Mahone's. From Dallas, where they took my inspiration from, uh, Michael Pramal convinced me to play the deck, and I managed to get top 16 at that event, um, losing to Eeyore Costa and fitting in Lynch with the eventual first and second place finishers of the tournament. Um, in Charlotte, North Carolina, I played Zorak Gardevoir, um, a deck popularized by Tord after winning uh, Oceania IC, and I thought the deck was pretty busted at the time, and Pram convinced me to play it. I wanted to play Zoro Rock personally, and it boiled down to me um, losing my last two to Zoro Rock and Buzz Garb uh, to very good players, not only Champagne, Alex Hill. Going from 6-1 to 6-3 was a little heartbreaking. Um, it was probably the hardest regionals for me. Uh, as a person, you guys can read about that in my blog. But that was that deck choice. I then played Lucario Lycanroc when I went to Portland on the... I booked Portland on a whim, and Michael Primo just told me to buy Lucario, so I said, okay, cool, I'll bring them. And he told me we were playing scoop-ups. I said, whatever, dude, I'll play the list, I don't care. Uh, and I, I managed to get to a day-two berth after going 6-1 with a lot of favorable matchups across the day, and id twice into day-two. And then day-two, everything just went downhill, playing against Sylveons, playing against Bulus. Like, the day just was not going to get any better. Um, and then I go up against... Uh, no, sorry, then I went to... Salt Lake City, Utah, where I piloted a Buzzwall Lycanroc deck. Um, this time I added my own twist to the list, uh, putting in Muscle Bands, Karina's, Scramble Switch, all this fun mumbo-jumbo into the deck, and I just said, you know, we'll see what happens, and uh, the deck worked out pretty well, honestly. Um, and I got a top 16 berth again, this time actually losing to Zork on my win at ID Inn. Um, and then I went to... Toronto, where I piloted a Dusk Main Magnezone deck, and that was my first real I just want to have fun deck. Um, it netted me 50 points at the top 64 finish, and I lost round 8, which was my uh, round to stay alive to a uh, type of Bulu Vika Vault, which is you know not a matchup I expect. I lost to a mirror match throughout the day, and one Buzzwall. I beat three Buzzwalls on the day. The one time I drew a little bit a little bit unoptimal, things went, things went south. Um, and then I, I went to the Mexico City special event uh, where I piloted Necrozma Malamar, which is a list that Peter Kika gave to me, said it was pretty good. I changed like two cards to it, and I went in there, and I got a finals berth, uh, conceding my, to my friend Sam Chen of the finals, who was playing the same six, or 59, um, and he won. I got second. What more can I say? We were pretty happy. Um, and then I went to Cancun the weekend after, played 
a very similar list to what I had played before and rattle off a top 16 berth going 5-2, and two, losing... I lost two rounds very early to actually the eventual first and second place finishers, Eder and um, Manuel, and it was a little heartbreaking. And then I went to Madison, Wisconsin, where I played the three baby buzz, Buzz Rock, with everybody else. But that's where, you know, my luck ran a little dry. I went 3-4 and decided, you know, we're done here today. Um, there's no pity points for me to earn. I didn't want to keep playing because I wasn't drawing particularly well with the deck. And, you know, it happens. The luck happens. And as far as my three Intercontinentals go, at the European Intercontinental, I piloted a Metal Toolbox deck that um, used Drampa, Cell Steel, Scissor EX, um, all these, like, fun tools, but... I was unable to earn points at that one. I went 3-3-1 three, three, drop. Um, I think I went 3... I actually think at 3-3-1, three, three, I went... I knew I was out of points, so I went to my 8th round, told my opponent that he won the match, uh, signed the slip, and I left. Um, because he flipped over a Volcanion also. He, he asked if he wanted to play one game for fun. I said, sure. After conceding, he flipped over a Volcanion. I said, I actually don't want to play this. This doesn't seem fun. Um, and I, I pretty much got up and left. The Oceania IC, I played Buzzwell Lycanroc. Um, it was all the rage there. It seemed like the best deck at the time. Nothing could really beat it. I started 3-3 at the event because I lost to my uh, Mirror counterparts and a Vika Bulu. And I managed to rattle it black. I clawed myself back to a 6-3 finish, earning CP, uh, earn, getting 34th actually, so I barely missed day 2. Um, and then in Latin America, I piloted my Zorok Lycanroc deck that I was tried and true to uh, using counter energies and all this fun stuff like so uh, like Sudwoodle, um, but it did not, um, it got me to a 5 through unfinished, and I was very fortunate um, to finish 119th and earn 100 CP, which was crazy. Um, so my breakdown of the season is, I've earned 290 points with Buzzwell Lycanroc decks, uh, 280 with Zorok Lycanroc, 240 with Necrozma Malmar, 130 with Nightmare Zorok, one tournament, counts it, you know? Uh, 90 with Volcanion, 75 with Greninja, 60 with Lucario Lycanroc, 60 with Necrozmic Garbodor, 57 with Close Upon Zorok, 50 with Dustman Magnazone, 50 with Gardevoir, Broken Vore, 40 with Spread, 40 with Gully Garb, 40 with Turpa Turtles, 40 with Metagross, 40 with Zorok Gardevoir, 40 with Disadrag Lizpod, 40 with Zorok Weavile, 32 with Xerneas Break Sylveon, and 25 with Hoa Salazzle, which brings our grand total to... Um, let, me, let me look at this. I have earned... Uh, 1,515 CP on the season with 204 points from those cups and other things being taken to what we call the void because um, they did not go anywhere, did not earn anyone anything, and yeah. So that's a little bit of a breakdown for the season. I know it's not as well in detail as you guys might want. I put a lot of it into that blog post that I wrote I told you guys about. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But other than that, thank you guys for coming by, dropping by, checking it out. Um, like, subscribe, all that mumbo jumbo. I'm on Twitch, I'm on Twitter, Franco's on Twitch, Franco's on Twitter, come check us out, we are back, the Chaos Gym is back, I am back, I'll try to put out some more content um, this weekend, especially for you guys, especially before NIC a little bit, and between NIC and Worlds, I'll be talking about the card reviews, um, all that stuff, so thank you guys.